It's week 16 of the NFL, and the spotlight is on George Kittle. And with him, any catch could be a big one. He's the NFL leader in touchdown receptions. It's the 49ers and the Broncos, and it's coming up next. EA Sports coverage of the NFL has us at the foot of the Rockies, just west of downtown Denver at Empower Field at Mile High. It is week 16 in the NFL, and we've got a good one in store, as it'll be the San Francisco 49ers taking on the Denver Broncos. And hello again, everyone. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. And Charles, we look at this Bronco team. They come in losers of two straight, so they're trying to right the ship here a little bit. They're teetering a little bit, aren't they? And now things could really go south if they lose this game. So they understand the importance of playing well and stopping this streak. On the other side of the field for the visiting 49ers, they come into this one off a bit of a clunker last time out, a loss that ended their five-game winning streak. And off we go from Denver. So here are the Broncos now for their opening drive. And they'll be led out by their quarterback now in his third season in the league. We're seeing it more and more in this league, how teams love to have athletes back there taking the snaps, guys who can throw it and move around and get yards with their legs if needed. He's one of the best examples that we see out there right now. He can throw for hundreds of yards one week and then run for 100 plus the next. He adds an extra dimension that really confounds defenses when he puts it all together. They begin the drive with Williams. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. The numbers for Williams a week ago. 15 carries, 67 yards, and a touchdown. 11 touchdowns on the ground this season, and the pride really extends throughout the entire offense. And in this case, I'm focusing on the... And the Niners get there and bring him down. It's the former number four overall pick, Cleland Furl, that got in there to bring him down. They just gave up a sack there, and if I'm not mistaken, they gave up four last week, didn't they? Yes. And yeah. just looking really porous, aren't they? They really are, and I'm wondering if they're going to have to start thinking about keeping the tight end in, maybe a back, someone to help assist, because right now, the quarterback's been getting hit a lot the last couple of games. That was their first third down try of the game, and clearly something was off in the execution of that play. Good news, they've got a whole game left to clean that up and start clicking on those key third down throws. It's a 39-yard punt, three on the return, and the Niners will go on offense first and 10. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. And leading them out is their fifth-year quarterback. And he just continues to throw touchdown pass after touchdown pass, leading the league here down the final stretch of the year. Guys will say that the numbers and rankings, they don't matter to him very much. I don't know how much I actually believe that. Sure, he's team first, but I think everyone would like to see him finish number one, including himself. And able to get this one all the way up to about the 46-yard line. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. A throwing here, Purdy. That's over the middle and caught by Ayuk. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. The Niners hit 11-3 and three on the year. The Charles, they were losers last time out. What do you think they need to do differently here? I don't think it needs to be as drastic as burning up last week's game tape or not watching it, but the attitude has to be what's done is done. Let's move on. Put that one behind them, galvanize themselves, and go forward and get a win in this one. Second and ten, a very chilly day here, but no snow. And yeah, I got to say, if it's going to be this cold, I want snow. <laughs> you should see Charles' face. He's looking at me like I'm crazy. And able to push forward for right around three yards down to the 42. And they'll need to get to the 35 if they want to keep this drive going on third down. Here's Purdy. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos' 17-yard line. Purdy now to throw. 
Buying time to his left. And his throw here is incomplete. They certainly did a nice job improvising there, extending the play, hoping someone would come open downfield, but they never did. They go play action here, Purdy. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And the 49ers are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the one. I think he has to be saying to himself, how did that not wind up a touchdown? Remember, he just did the tip of the ball to cross the plane. It's not going to get there. Touchdown! George Kittle with touchdown number 27. That ties Priest Holmes for the third most in a single year. And the Niners will jump on top with the game's first score here this afternoon. An ideal start for them, really. You force the punt, and then you go down and score. And you've got to see a fist pump on the sideline from the head coach, don't you? Because he's turned into his bench, and he's telling his team, this is how we prepare. Force the punt, go downfield and score. I told you guys, it's just like a boxer in the gym preparing for the fight. Now we get to turn it all loose. Purdy will throw for it, and he will get in to make it 8 nothing. He hits the big target for the two-point try. <laughs> Defenses hate those guys, especially around the goal line. It's hard to decide who you're going to put on him. Are you going to put a smaller corner on him? Are you going to put a safety who doesn't have maybe the same coverage skills? How about a linebacker? He may have the size, but he's not used to really covering in space. That's why the tight end gives you such a great advantage when you're throwing the football. So now the second drive offensively coming up for the Denver Broncos. So, Charles, the season winding down, the playoffs obviously not in their future. As they look ahead to the offseason, what spots do they maybe need to fill? Well, I think that they like the guy who's calling the plays and throwing the ball. I think that he's a pretty good player. Need some help, I think, on the perimeter, though. Help him out with receivers because I think if he gets an upgrade there, his play gets that much better, too. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. Now we give up the middle to Williams. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. A yard in the wrong direction makes third down tougher. Third down and nine. Looking to throw. Steps nowhere to go. Here he lost the football. On one of the linebackers has got it. And they're already in the red zone. The 18-yard line is where they take over. So he went out of the pocket left, and then things got dicey. And what often happens is when they get outside, they want to keep their eyes downfield in order to try and complete a pass. But when they try to make a play, they've got to get their footwork involved. And that can really mess them up as well. And in this case, nothing went right, and the ball got knocked free. The 49er offense, they're coming back out onto the field, and we're going to give you a look at the playoff picture now into the weekend in the NFC. As of this moment, as pretty much everyone knows, they sit alone in that top spot, but nothing is guaranteed. They haven't even clinched the playoffs. So a good st touchdown, 49ers! Debo Samuel, an 18-yard touchdown grab. And the 49ers are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Week after week, Charles, when we see this offense operate, I don't know, they just seem to get more impressive. They certainly do, and let's face it, it's no surprise they're the best in the NFL in scoring. This team designs things well and executes even better. And here, it only takes a few snaps before they're in the end zone. That's how they demoralize teams. That's how they put them on notice. They'll try and throw for it. And he is in to make it 16 to nothing. I think we're sensing a trend here. Two first-half touchdowns. After going for two after the first score, CD, I thought maybe they would kick the PAT here. No, they get two more. No, they decided to really press the advantage because, remember, getting the two after the first score, you've already got the other team back on their heels if they're going to mount a comeback. But to go up two scores and two two-point conversions, you've really got them thinking on the other sideline. And the football going back over to the Denver Broncos. Still in the first half, but this offense has struggled. Haven't really been able to get anything going, not only in the points category, but in the yards category. We'll see if they can do better here on this drive. A run there on first down and a pretty good one at five yards, so make it second and five. 
When you're down early, how do you get back in the game, maybe establish the run? I think they're trying to do that. Now I'm with you on that one, and what I like about the message is that there's no panic from the head coach. He's already told his offense coordinator, let's run the football, let's get things settled down a little bit and find our way back into this game. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. They'll look to throw here. Looking left side, it's complete. He's got it. And I don't think he got there, no. Gee, short by maybe a foot, maybe. Call it fourth and inches. Out is Rigoberto Sanchez on fourth down to punt this thing. He'll send this one into the mile high air, and it's a good one. Fielded just inside the 20. They'll call it a punt of 44 yards. The return was for seven. And they will take over first and 10. San Francisco's offense returns to the field. It has been about as perfect of a start to this game as these guys could have asked for, Charles. They've scored on their first two drives. They still haven't given anything up on the other side of the ball. So they can already make this a three-score game here if they can come away with points on this drive. Yeah, they're almost pushing them to the brink, aren't they, partner? Almost to the point now where it's a loss of words for me, which I know would excite all of our viewers. But you're just not supposed to see that type of dominance so quickly in a game like this. Everything they've done has been working so far. Offense, defense, you name it, it's going well for them. And shouting him off, now open field. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. Big yardage after the catch. That one winds up going for 36. On first down, Purdy. Again, he'll find Samuel for the completion. They'll give him four yards there, and that'll bring up second down. Final 30 seconds of this first quarter, and it's been a quarter dominated by the guys with the football. Once more, Purdy looking to throw. And they're going to get him. He's sacked back around the 28. Dio Odengbo. It'll go as a loss of about eight as he gets in there to drop him. 16-0. That's the score after one on EA Sports. The 49ers with the football here to begin the second quarter. They need a crafty play call here. 14 yards is what they need to try to convert this thing. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Under pressure, and they got to him again. And the defense coming through on third down. A loss of seven to bring up for even keeping the back end for extra protection on third down, they still couldn't prevent the sack. Now it's fourth and long thanks to a terrific individual effort on defense. And his kick is indeed good. So he's been automatic to this point of the season, and he connects on the field goal there. And what a luxury it is to have a kicker you can depend upon, partner, because he hasn't missed all year long. Converts on that one as well. And kudos to you. You didn't jinx him. And to no one's surprise here in Denver, that'll carry through the back of the end zone for a touchback. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. They start the drive on the ground. It's Williams. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. This drive starting off on the right foot, 18 yards. That was good, tough running right up the middle. And if the defense can't penetrate and make him slow his pace or change direction, that's often the end result. They'll look to throw now on first down. And he's got his man on the out route. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. Ball on the 47-yard line. Here's second and six. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. And that one off the mark behind him, incomplete. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. And down he goes. The 49ers get there. And the defense coming through on third down, a loss of seven to bring up four. That's three sacks now, and that's not much of a surprise to me, nor should it be to you. This team, they lead the league in sacks. Yeah, they do. This is something that we are starting to witness time and time again. 
taken at about the 16. Nice punt, but good work on the return to get back 11 yards. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. San Francisco set to go on offense once more. Last time out, you remember their drive stalled, but thanks to their kicker, booted a long field goal to at least get them three. Now here, they'll try to do better and find the end zone. And in our experience, how much fun is it for coaches to know that they've got a kicker who can nail it from long distance? Now, the hard part is, as an offensive play caller, you don't want that in your head too much where you're relying on it, and he goes out and gets the job done for them. But I'm quite sure he would be content to just kick extra points from here on out. Yeah, absolutely no question. I think his teammates would be okay with him just kicking the extra points as well. Purdy's throw taken in by Samuel. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. The catch and run going to wind up netting him 33 yards. Already over 1,000 yards receiving this season. That catch is just going to add to his total. Certainly not resting on his laurels. He's trying to continue to gain as many yards as possible and continue this big season. So that changes things a bit. Here's a first and 10 all the way down at the 35. Purdy looking to throw. And this is caught inside the five. Touchdown. Debo Samuel with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the 49ers continue to pull away here in this first half. What a first half he is compiling here. He's already over 100 yards receiving and now two touchdowns, CD. Brandon, you know I don't like to play the game where you start projecting when you're at a certain point. Well, let's face it, he's off to a tremendous start. So 200 yards, four touchdowns. I don't think anything's out of the question right now. He's blowing up coverages. You've got to double him every snap. Otherwise, he's going to defeat you on almost every play. They'll look to throw. And this is going to be caught. It's good. And that extends their lead by two more. And around the goal line, especially on two-point tries, sometimes the QB's best friend is that big target, the tight end. I love how you described it because you know he's going to have some length and some catch radius as well as a big body to keep people away from the football. So the Broncos come back out as we give you a look at the playoff race in the AFC. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. They'll come out throwing here on first down. They're throwing left sideline there, but it's incomplete. Some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all. And I understand why they look lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. That's complete. It's Greg Dulcich. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. First catch for him. It's good for a dozen and a first down. They'll look to throw. A throw left sideline falls incomplete. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. He's got to throw it better, got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught. They've got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Charvarius Ward. And into the end zone, a pick six for the 49er D as they score the touchdown. An excellent play there, CD, on the pick six. And I, I think they, were they in nickel? Did they have an extra DB out there? Yeah, Brandon, I think they were in standard nickel, not the uh, Buffalo, as teams like to call it, meaning three safeties for big nickel. They just wanted to take away the quarterback's throwing lanes, and that's exactly what they did and came through with a big-time pick six. Moody good with the extra point. And the route is on here in this first half. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. 
And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. And Denver getting set to take the field. Now remember, they were just out here a moment ago through the pick six, so we'll see if they can take better care of the football this go around. Yeah, and sometimes, partner, I think it's almost better that you just throw the pick six. And you oh, everything falling apart now. Another one intercepted. Picked up by Talanoa Hufanga. When a team's turned it over three times in the first half, we just look at the offense and say, guys, what are you doing? But instead, we really should be looking at the defense. They've created the takeaways. Two interceptions, one cause fumble. They played awfully well swarming to the ball here in the first half. Debo Samuel trotting out with his offense to start this next drive. Previous series, definitely a focal point. Three catches, the touchdown grab. As a DB, your former DB, is there a number of catches on a drive where you're like, oh, he got the best of us? I'm not sure there's a number, but there's a great feel. And what he did on the last drive, yeah. <laughs> Especially with a touchdown. Yes. You're never happy. You're exactly right. The way he capped it off. So you feel that at the sideline, and now you're looking at your buddies and saying, okay, what are we going to do to take things away from him? Because I'm not sure the other guys can make those sort of plays. So let's make sure that we don't let him get going again. On first down, this is McCaffrey. And here he'll get it down to the seven. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because they often nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Oh, and one of the linemen on the other side has got it. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Obviously, you got to hold on to the football, but. I've got to give credit to the defense there. Good job of knocking it free. Yeah, because a lot of the time we just blame the offensive players for not taking care of it. How about the effort of the defensive players knowing that... God and now before the ball changes hands, they're going to take a look at this just to make sure. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. Third down, here's McCaffrey. And he'll be tackled after a gain of four. Still three yards short. Fourth down. Give him four yards on the play, and that will lead us into the two-minute warning. So Purdy off and Moody on for the 49er field goal. And his kick is good. And that will extend their lead even further. So the turnover leads to points as they add three there. Yeah, what a sequence there and a nice one for them. They force the interception, put together a little drive, and then come away with three points. Nothing to it, partner. Just do it. So here's Moody back out there now to send this one away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Denver's offense now set to go. And for this offense, Charles, you got to think kind of crucial here to put something together on this drive because remember last time out, they threw the interception on the very first play. And you can't afford to let this defense keep building any more momentum. They're playing awfully well, and they're awfully confident right now. To me, it's time to attack and take some of that momentum back. But make sure you're selective in doing so. Understand where you want to throw the football and make sure it's open before the ball leaves your hand. Here's second and ten. Now back to throw. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And now this is scooped up by the 49ers. And fantastic field position has them just outside the 10 at the 11-yard line of the red zone. He already had the one fumble loss, so now two fumbles lost here in this first half. Not setting the pace the way that you want it done. I mean, here in the first half, already twice the ball's come out and hit the turf got to find a way to take care of it. Otherwise, they may have to start thinking about maybe someone different at that position. Now a draw play to McCaffrey, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Now Samuel. Yeah, he was able to shed one tackle, but could not get away from there. 
Three yards on the pick up there, but they've only got it back to third and ten. Now right where this set of downs started, they need a full ten here to pick up the first down and move the chains. And he's not going to get anywhere close to the marker as he'll stop him well short of the yellow line. They'll get six there on the run, but it brings up fourth down. So Purdy off and Moody on for the 49er field goal. This is a fairly straightforward 22-yard short attempt. So the fumble recovery had them set up an ideal field position, but they can muster only three points out of it. Yeah, when you're able to force turnovers, especially when it results in field position like they had, you really want to make it hurt. Here, they take the field goal. That's definitely not what they were hoping for. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. The Broncos going to get one more possession in this first half. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively, they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And that will be incomplete with a clock showing 18 seconds now to go. Well, this defense is certainly organized and playing off of each other because the rush is providing pressure and the coverage is forcing incompletions and capitalizing on mistakes. When you get every level on defense hitting it once, you get first half scores just like this one. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. So we've reached halftime here in what is quickly turning into quite a round. As we send you on out to our studios in Orlando, here's Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. The weather might be cold, but the playoff races are heating up here on this final Sunday before Christmas. So let's get to it. We'll start by heading out west, State Farm Stadium in Glendale. And it's the Cardinals who have the lead as they play the second quarter. The Cardinals locked in a tight one, but this is a game you feel they've got to have. Next, we'll head east. It's on to Cincinnati as we check in on the Bengals at home at Paycor Stadium. And they trail the visiting Chiefs in that one. Rasheed Rice, a touchdown reception. Lastly, let's motor up to the Motor City. See what's happening with the Lions at home at Ford Field. And they were victorious in that one over the visiting L.A. Rams. The Rams are down to two games remaining to try and find that first win as they fall to 0 and 15. The highlights from the first half, all one-sided. This one got out of hand early, and now you have to wonder how these teams will approach this second half because this one's already close to being in the bag if it's not already. Final adjustments being made for the second half. Whether they'll amount to much in a game that's already pretty well decided, well, that's another question. Nevertheless, let's get you back out to Brandon yes, and Char. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. The 49er offense set to go to begin quarter number three. Purdy going to lead the 49ers to the line, first and 10 at their own 27. And he'll start by handing this off to McCaffrey. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. Most of the damage has been done through the air. I mean, they've rung the bell three times with passing touchdowns, but guess what? Ground game has not been neglected. Nice little burst right there. Back to the ground on first, it's McCaffrey. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And he's able to get it all the way down to the 20. 75 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. And I don't want to harp on it, but this defense among the bottom in the league against the run, and they show it right there. And it doesn't matter when you get prepared for this defense, whether you're good running the ball or not. That's your plan. Run the ball against them. That's their weakness. And by the way, I think you harped on it. 
Yeah, my bad. So after the loss of a yard, they'll look to push forward here on second down and 11. Again, they run again. It's McCaffrey. And he's only going to get a yard from the 20 to the 19. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. Shotgun handoff down to McCaffrey. And he is going to be stopped at the 12, short of the first down. Well, seven yards on the carry there, but now they're staring at fourth down. Well, lots of praise on this drive, obviously. I, I know you're seeing what I'm seeing. Those guys up front, they're getting it done. Doesn't matter what play is called. They are handling their business at the line of scrimmage and dominating right now on this drive. And his kick is good. And that will extend their lead even further. Well, they picked up right where they left off in the first half. First drive after the break, they come away with three and increase that lead. Yeah, and you just want to keep building on that lead, don't you? Whether it's six points or three points, take everything you can get, keep maneuvering, keep adding to it, keep making it difficult for them to come back. So now a look at the Broncos as they head back out there for their first possession of the second half. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And he checks this one down to Williams. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. And he stopped immediately there. Not enough there for a first. No gain, as a matter of fact. And it leaves them at third and one. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he will have a Broncos first down. At least it would appear that way. He didn't get it by much, but yes, they do get the conversion on third and one. Up the middle, it's Williams. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. On play action, they'll throw. This will complete to Jerry Judy. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers 40. A first down there on a pickup of 25. Now a handoff. Here's Williams. And boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. Second and 10. Brings up second and 10. The 49ers, He'll look to throw. Wide open receiver complete. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers 18. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and 10. A give to Williams, running right. And he is going to lose yardage here. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. Second and 11. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he's brought down. 18 yards that time to push him up first and goal. to throw and the pass is caught touchdown Denver Jerry Judy a great effort there his fourth touchdown on the year and the Broncos are able to eat in just a bit to this sizable deficit the extra point splits the uprights so they do get one score back but still a long way to go here in the third quarter from a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. 
And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. The Niners set to take over on offense. Still well in control of this ball game, despite giving up that touchdown a moment ago. Purdy going to lead the 49ers to the line, first and 10 at their own 19-yard line. He'll look to throw. This one caught by Kittle. And mark him down way up close to the 40 at the 39. The end result, 21 yards. McCaffrey on the counter. Able to slither by. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 30 before being taken down. It's another first down as this time they get an even 20. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. Welcome back now to Denver. And this is a blowout so far as we get set for the fourth quarter. A very one-sided affair. No room to be had there on the first down run as he's lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. He's having a big game running the football, but that one will hurt the yards per carry a little bit. Yeah, but the average he's got so far, that's the type of average he wants to take with him to contract negotiations, doesn't it? Holding offense. So they accept the penalty, of course, and push the offense backwards a bit. Now after the holding call, here's second and 20. McCaffrey following the penalty. And he'll be taken down right around the 41-yard line. 111 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. The offense on third down, just one for five to this point. This is third and ten. They stay on the ground. McCaffrey again. And yeah, maybe a little over pursuit there as he's able to take this down to the 25-yard line. It'll go as a first down for San Francisco on a pickup of 16. Up the gut, McCaffrey. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. Ten more there and another first down. It's a game of ten. First down, San Francisco. From the shotgun to McCaffrey. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. I know you're trying to wring every yard out of a run, but I think nine yards there is ideal in this situation. Yeah, now next couple plays, you only need one yard. Keep that clock rolling. And they're going to get to him. A sack. Sack back at the nine-yard line. It'll be a loss of only a couple on the sack, but now it'll bring up third down. They'll try and pick it up with McCaffrey. Yeah, this is only going to be a gain of two. He needed three. It's fourth and one. But a good play is made on defense. Oftentimes, leverage is the key to everything. Defensive line not getting turned. All the other guys making sure they're in the right spot. And on that play, they were able to stop him short on a first down. Well, ultimately, not really sure that they're going to need those three points, but they'll take the three, and they pad that lead. Yeah, this one's already wrapped up, but you and I both know. If you're an offensive coordinator, you never let up on the gas unless the head coach tells you to do so, and maybe you've actually clicked him off in your headset so you can keep calling plays and trying to add to this lead. Denver's offense ready to go again, and they unfortunately are staring at a mini losing streak developing, trailing here in the fourth quarter. This would be their third straight defeat. And he's going to be intercepted for the third time thus far. Picked off by Fred Warner. And his guys are going to take over at the 39-yard line. But with this advantage, this defense knew that passes were coming. And they stayed in position, Charles, and picked one off here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, what a way to cap things off, huh? Because I think this is part of the game within the game. They see the scoreboard, they see what they can accomplish, and they went for it. Well, the 49ers settling in for their next drive. And after the interception, they are sitting in an even better spot with the ball and a comfortable fourth quarter lead. 
Looks like he's going to get a couple here on this first down carry, and that'll make it second and eight. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. It, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. McCaffrey running up the middle. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. A loss of a yard, and it brings up four. So Purdy off and Moody on for the 49er field goal. And this will split the uprights. It's right down the middle, and that will extend their lead even further. Well, the only silver lining on the other sideline, CD, is that they kept him out of the end zone, but still, that's another three points added on to this large lead. Yeah, no shortage of scoring four big plays on defense in this one. And even up by four possessions, still finding ways to create opportunities and capitalize with points. And no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. Facing a big fourth quarter deficit here, things not looking good. You know, this offense, though, they've been in the top half of the NFL so far this season, but in this one, well, their defense has really struggled. And they worked this well upfield across the 45. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and 10. He'll drop to throw. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Mason through the middle of the field. And somewhat of a measure of revenge as he's in for the touchdown. But they still trail big time. He'll take it, but he won't be able to smile about it. All you hear from coaches and personnel directors in the NFL, how difficult it is for a rookie receiver to have an impact on the game. So much to learn, so much offense to absorb. Looks like he's picking it up pretty well. I would say so. And how about that for your first career NFL touchdown? And I don't know that he envisioned it quite that way, but if he was smart, he probably dreamed about it a little bit. Sanchez now. He'll kick it away following the touchdown. This fielded right at the goal line. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. The 49ers ready to set up shop again offensively. This has really just been a lopsided affair. What a performance they put on, and now they get the football back here with a big lead in the fourth quarter. You know, in the past, we might be discussing dinner plans, talking about steak and sushi, whatever the case is, CD. This ball game is pretty much one of the books. Yeah, we were going to start bringing up dinner a long time ago if we wanted to, partner. And I think a few of the guys out in the field already making plans for the evening. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. They'll try and burn some clock now with McCaffrey. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. They'll get 13 yards for the second play in a row. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. They'll give it up to McCaffrey. It's a pretty strong running there as he'll take this across the 50 and down to the 44. Man, 188 yards rushing now for the ball game on 24 carries. On first down, this is McCaffrey. And down to the 41. I like it. I like the call. Still an opportunity to run the football and chew up a little more time off the clock. Second down and eight. This is McCaffrey on the give. Pass the 20. Five. And they are going to score again. Yet another touchdown as they just add to their totals. But not much defensive resistance on that drive. And really, Charles, the way this offense has been humming, they haven't faced much defensive resistance the entire game. Yeah, I think it's safe to say that one team, their defense did not wake up and make it to the stadium for this one. There may be some major changes on that side of the ball when we see them the next time out. Moody good with the extra point. And this one was over a while ago as they just add on to that big lead. So following the touchdown, here's Moody back out to send it away. The Broncos, take over the Broncos offense now gets ready to head back onto the field. Well, I think that the folks here had hoped that maybe this home atmosphere would carry their guys to a surprise victory. 
but it does not appear that that's going to be the case. There's too much to handle on the other side in this one. Man open, he's got it complete to Cortland Sutton. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. They'll drop to throw. He's going to let it fly. And this one is incomplete. Similar to a shooter in basketball, just connected on the previous shot. They run another set for him on the next play. Now, we had a guy who made the catch. They tried to get the big one downfield, but came up empty. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. This has been a rough one, to put it mildly for him. And after this one's done, you just feel like at the post-game press conference, this team's going to have a lot of questions and definitely not a lot of answers. He's got his target. That's complete. And he will have the Broncos first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And as this defense walks off the field, they can do so with their heads held high. What a performance by the offense, too. I mean, really, Charles, just complete domination on both sides of the football here in this one. Certainly was, and I think both sides compete against each other all the time. You go to each other in practice, obviously your training camps, your offseason. But on game day, you both want to show your best. And I think that's what we saw from both the offense and the defense 